Listen to verse 12. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? What does all this mean? Praise God that when the church is being the church and when the power of God is filling his people, there will be those like moths drawn to the light that will come. What is this? This is where our witness begins to walk in a way that leads others to Christ. That it's not about our buildings, it's not about our programs, it's not about any of the polish, it's about the power of the paraclete in us. It's the holy helper, it's the spirit of God that you cannot ignore. And friends, if what we have could be ignored without the spirit, then we need to stop and become dependent upon him so that people don't see polish, they see the paraclete in his power. Listen to Pastor Simbola again bring the clarity that is so important. One of the great problems about appreciating the Holy Spirit, learning more about him, and pastors preaching more about him is there's almost like a prejudice now against the Holy Spirit. The body of Christ is divided into uh, one side, just stressing the word of God and being afraid of this emotional fanaticism often linked to the Holy Spirit. Of course, that's been fed by another part of the body of Christ, which has wild excesses, uh, unbiblical manifestations, things that don't edify, and if I may say, a lot of ministers who use and abuse the Holy Spirit to make money or self-aggrandize themselves. So the Holy Spirit is caught in the middle by people who say, I don't want to know about the Holy Spirit, I just want to go by the Word. But the Holy Spirit wrote the Word, and He speaks a lot about Himself in the Word. And then other people who are abusing it and, and stopping people from really experiencing the true Holy Spirit. One of the other problems is people have tried to make a Holy Spirit religion, where religion is centered around the work of the Holy Spirit. That's not Christianity. Christianity is centered on Christ. And Jesus, when he taught about the Holy Spirit in the book of John, he said that when he comes, he won't speak of himself. He's not ever going to draw attention to himself. What he's going to do is extol Christ, put the spotlight on Jesus Christ, make the things of Christ real to us, and then have them applied to our heart. And that's all important uh, because let's think about Christianity. For a lot of folks, it's just the cross and no resurrection power of the Holy Spirit. And that's the problem why our churches are weak and too many of, we, of us believers are walking in less than victory. When Jesus went to the cross and shed his blood, he took care of the past. The past is gone. All our sins are forgiven. Our iniquities, God has promised he will remember no more. But there's another problem. Even if you take out my past and wash it away and say everything you've ever done wrong is not only forgiven, but will never be remembered by God. It's forgotten. I still have another problem. How about today? How about tomorrow when the evil one comes to tempt me? How am I going to reproduce the life of Christ by my own self-effort? I can tell you right now, there's nothing about Jesus Christ in Jim Cimbala, naturally speaking, unless... The Holy Spirit lives in me and produces Christ-like qualities. I am hopeless. I am the most unlike person to Jesus Christ, I think, in the whole universe. But that's why Jesus said, he must come. He has to come. I'm going to send him to you. The Father sent the Son. We know a lot about that. But the Son sent the Spirit. He's the one who empowers us, strengthens us against temptation. He's the one who teaches us how to pray, who makes the Word of God real to us when we, when we read it. Now, uh, the Bible tells us over and over again that this Holy Spirit is the one who makes the new covenant have power. Remember what the old covenant was, the Old Testament law? It was God's holiness displayed in what is called the Ten Words or the Ten Commandments of God. Were they accurate? Did they display God's holy nature? Yes. Did it help the people? No. The letter, even the letter carved on those stones given to Moses, they kill. 
Why? Because my sinful tendencies override my conscience, which says, that word is true. You need to live that way. Stop lying. Stop doing this. Start doing that. No, we don't have the power. We don't have the grace, shall we use that New Testament word, to be what God wants us to be. And the Lord says that this new covenant is a born-again experience where not only are our sins forgiven, but the Spirit lives inside of us. And if anyone is in Christ Jesus, they are a new creation, not by just the work of the cross, but by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in every single believer. Amen. Do you see where coming to the full context of the scriptures becomes so important that we can be so misled so easily? And, and I can tell you as one who has come through the ranks, there is good reason to have concern with what some call the charismania movement. But there is also reason for concern that we not become charisphobic and fear the Holy Spirit. We are to walk with God in the full context of his word. Listen to what is said by Jonathan Edwards in a book that I've included in your notes. I've highlighted this book for you. There are over a hundred pages of notes waiting for you attached to this sermon, part of which is the full analysis and summary of this book. Jonathan Edwards said, there is such a great concern that we've got people that are way off the plantation on the hyper-charismatic side, and we've got people that are way off the plantation now in the charisphobic side, afraid of the Holy Spirit. We must define the truth of God's word. His words, this in the preface, the most crucial question for the human race is this, what are the distinguishing marks of the people who enjoy God's favor? Those who are on their way to heaven. You see, this is important because in verse 12, the question was asked, what does this mean? In verse 13, that closes out our passage for this morning. Not only do we see those that are coming curious, but we also have the mockers. And I tell you, in full consistency and context of God's word, that there is a theology of rejection. You must understand that the vast majority of the world, all who have rejected the invitation of the gospel, and even the religious who are not yet redeemed, if they are not filled with the power of the Spirit, they will push away this truth and love. 